Good afternoon. My name is Barry Selby. Oh, jumping, sorry, jumping out of sequence. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Daily Broadcast. This is episode number 708, 708. And the topic today is outgrowing your past. Don't go back again. Um, before I get into that, let me introduce myself the right way. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, inspirational speaker, and a relationship attraction expert. And um, I hope. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's better. Um, that's also what inspired these talks I do every day called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, although the title is abbreviated to get more information into the titles, but that's where it started as. Um, just over two years ago after the election in 2016. That I won't go into right now. Anyway, so right now we're at episode number 708, 708, and the topic today is um, Outgrowing Your Past. Don't go back again, or I should say, um, growing up in a way, because, and this is about relationship-centric conversation, but it also applies to other areas of life as well. So, I'm so tempted to go. No, mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm so tempted. Um, all right, fine. You know those people. <laughs> you know those people who seem to be seven years old when they're actually adults i'm not going to go that's not what i'm going to teach about but you are aware there are people out there who do act like children they throw tantrums they don't get what they want they're very self-centered um that's a different conversation but the same teaching applies but i'm going to get bring more generalist general and more relevant hopefully to your own life have you discovered for yourself i you become aware of yourself in certain circumstances, circumstances or situations that things happen that trigger or challenge you that you vacate your conscious mind or you vacate your your adult awareness and you seem to revert to a childlike response so i'm not necessarily in her tantrum like i mentioned earlier but you are perhaps in a place where when you are around other people and an upset occurs or a trauma or a challenge situation shows up you either become immobilized so you can't function or you revert to a way of responding that is not particularly conscious, aware, or adult-like. This is one. This is a part of the equation, not the only part. So I'm going to get something else later on. But I want to give you this to think about: is if you find yourself being um, reactive versus responsive, meaning that you feel like you don't have the skills, tools, and the ability to function as an adult, and you find yourself trapped in what feels like a very young experience. Although, to be honest. You may not be, may even be aware of this. You may just discover afterwards, looking back and going, why did I act differently? Why did I act this way? That is basically because, well, I don't want to say is because of this, but it's likely because you have some something stored in your memory banks at that age, roughly that age point, that is traumatic, that is negative, that is painful, that is maybe unpleasant enough that you want to suppress it. And what happens is the current scenario you're, doing, you're experiencing as an adult taps on the door of that memory and bypasses it to a younger place in your memory or a younger place in your consciousness so it responds from there versus being past that point what's happening is you have a gap between your younger self and your adult self I know I'm giving you very advanced stuff but okay that's what it is where there's this block in between that is um, repressed suppressed and, and removed from your ability to function so in some case you can respond as an adult, in some case you can only do it as a child because you, there's no bridge in between for you to connect the two. I'll get to that one part. So I'll come back to that in a moment because there's another piece of this as well, which is the patterns, and, I, and I, let me preface by saying, I've talked about this many times before, but I want to put it in the context of this past that you haven't outgrown yet. There are many, I say many people, I would say most of the population, to be honest, has this same trait or experience. So if you are having the same thing, I'm gonna explain in a moment, you're not alone by any means. But if you're watching this, you're way ahead of the conversation because you can do something about it. In the dating relating experience, are you noticing, are you aware, are you now becoming aware that what you're doing in your relationship experience is when something goes sideways, and I'll cover the sideways in a moment, that you're reacting differently than you thought you would in fact you're reacting from a much more visceral place a much more maybe 
um, dark place inside, a repressed place inside that you didn't know anything about or you weren't aware of. And you're also aware this is not the first time it's happened. It's almost like when something happens, this, I don't want to say monster, that's not the appropriate thing, but this repressed piece of you comes out of the darkness in to, react, in to respond or react to what's happened. Maybe it's one that does become very vehement and upset and violent. Maybe it becomes very suppressed and minimized and hidden. There's a spectrum of this. All of these types of reactions that may happen for you and your relationships, I'm not using relationship as a model, by the way, because that's where the most vulnerability and intimacy happens. Because these sort of patterns, these sort of memories get exposed in generally more of those sort of feelings. When it's something there's no attachment, no energy on, it doesn't happen. So if it's dealing with something at work, it probably won't be as triggering. It might happen around family, but definitely in a romantic relationship where you're deeper connected because what's happening is you're, again, as I mentioned in the other piece, something is tapping on the door of that repressed memory. So those repressed memories, that gap between childhood and adulthood, and, and I'm not saying it's the whole of that, but somewhere in that range, depending on where you were, where you had that happen to you, is a wedge between you and living life fully. It's a block that stops you functioning fully so you cannot actually um, leave that behind and grow up. You're actually still carrying that mindset around. It's unfortunately part of, the, part of what you have. It's a skill that, in a way, because it's a human condition to avoid the pain. And this is the thing. As humans, we tend and desire to be happy and enjoy pleasure versus suffering through pain. That's almost a, that's almost a trait of, survi of beyond survival is thriving, is being happy and comfortable. Being in pain and suffering is not what we really want. So when situations happen, especially when we're young, that are painful and upsetting, we will do our best to avoid them or suppress them so we don't experience them. As adults, actually as, gr as growing up from childhood, we will tend to hide away from those things because we don't want to think about those things. It's almost like avoidance because it's horrible, it's bad, it's not good. When the truth is that experience doesn't go away when you do that, it just gets buried. So rather than going, I'm not going to deal with that, it's out of my life, I'm not thinking about it, what's really happening is I'm pushing it down like a beach ball is going to come up later and avoiding dealing with it. That beach ball you push down will come up again. Again, as I mentioned, in those situations that tap on the door, that trigger that response, that will go back into your childhood, so excuse me, will go into that place inside where the feeling is suppressed and will knock on the door and then it will come up again. Your relationship paradigms, where you go through certain experiences, is one example of that. The same thread, as I mentioned earlier, which is the repressed memory from childhood, from dealing with any scenario that is traumatic, challenging, upsetting, um, painful, same thing's going there. So same thing's happening for both of those. So what I'm talking about here is not just romantic relationship experiences, but an experience that pushes on your comfort zone. That it's, no, it's not even that. It pushes on your safety, so you feel very um, protective and reactive. The way out of this, as I said in the title, is to grow up, but it's not quite as easy as it sounds to do that. Because the only way to, to actually leave your past behind, as you probably realize if you're watching this and going, oh, this is me, is that you won't leave your past behind by just burying it any further. You can't just keep burying it deeper and deeper and deeper. It doesn't work. What you're doing is just stir, turn, you're all doing is repressing inside. And if it's inside, it ain't gone. So to actually transform that experience means you've got to be willing, and this is the big work, to go in and unpack it, to go in and bring it up again, because that beach ball will not, you can't burst the beach ball. The only way to release it is to release it up and out so you can be free. For most people, that's the worst thing you could ever possibly do. For most people, they want to avoid it like the plague because that was such a painful experience back then or a dysfunctional experience back then that they no longer want to face it ever again. But unfortunately, that suppression, first of all, it, it contains a lot of energy you've put into it to, when it happened. And secondly, there's a lot of energy you put on top of it to hold it down because the amount of energy you have tied up in that upset, you have to have more of that energy to hold it down so it doesn't come up. That's energy that you can't use for your life. That's energy, in fact, that you can't explore and express and enjoy to thrive in your life. So if you've been feeling like your life isn't going the way you want, that maybe life isn't as exp expressive or as joyful, this might be one of the causes. There are other things that can do it too. So this little um, subtle teaching is a potent piece of the work I do because I'm so clear, as I mentioned yesterday in the broadcast, 
that we need to learn to have a better relationship with ourselves before we can have a a better relationship with anybody else. And part of that is to let the beach balls out, so to speak, to actually gently and under safe measurement, safe, safe methodologies, measurement, the methodologies, bring that beach ball up to be opened up and to be released. Because when you have released the energy of that, you get the energy back of the suppression. Oh, th- you're welcome, Mary. Sorry, sorry. So thanks. You want access to all the energy you can, re- you can reach. Yes. So when you release that internal beach ball, you will also get the energy back that you hold to hold it down. So that's double the energy, so to speak. So if you're feeling like your energy is being suppressed and held back, it might be because of these experiences. And again, it may not be relationship centric. It may have been some trauma or some challenge, some upset, some painful experience you had when you were younger. And it sometimes happens when you're actually an, a young adult, not sorry, when you're a kid. But the relationship stuff usually goes back further because your relationship um, challenges are often and usually tied to childhood experiences that you learned as a kid from your parents. I've talked about this many times before. So rather than do it here, you have to go about those broadcasts. So to leave your past behind and to grow up requires facing those demons, those challenges, those beach balls you put down inside. When you do that, you can be free to live, to love, to thrive at a whole new level than you had before. So I'm going to leave you, I'm going to give, you give you some invitations in a moment, but what I'm going to say is the way to get through that is getting help. It's rare that you can do it yourself. There are books that can help you with this. There are teachings and events that can teach you with it, help you with this. Oftentimes, though, it's better to have one-on-one care and support where somebody can help you. Whereas a therapist or a counselor or a coach who's got some therapeutic background, which I have, I wouldn't go just with, say, a business coach, for example. That wouldn't be the ideal choice. But also, I would go get somebody you can trust because you got to, this is something I know if you're dealing with this. is something that... Um, is something that, I say it this way, is so tender and so private that you want to find somebody you can trust. So if you're looking to get someone to help you with this, do your due diligence and test drive some people. Find out who you feel is most aligned with. I may not be the one you want to work with, and I'm fine with that. I'd rather you find the person that works best for you. So I will put some links in the comments. Um, one, a link for a discovery session with me so you can find out what I do and how I work so you can see if we fit together. And also I want to make sure that I want to work with you as well because it's two-way street. Secondly, I'm going to leave a link in the comments for the new group course I'm, I'm, I'm launching called Coming Home to Yourself because it will give you all these keys that will help you become more self-supportive. Although, frankly, if this is the real trauma you're dealing with and you know that, coaching, is more pro- coaching counseling, therapeutic support is probably more vital. So I'll leave a link for that in there as well just to have it there. Um, and as a reminder that love is the answer to a lot of these problems, not superficially, but real deep work, which is why I have the self-love practice. That'll be in the comments too, because why not? It's my video. I'll share a few things that I'm offering. Um, this is something that I know is deep work for a lot of people. For me, when I work with clients who want to do the work and we go down that path together, the resolution, the healing, the transformation afterwards is so much of a blessing that I'm, I mean, it's why I do it. You know, not, not so much why I do it. It's why I'm so passionate about this being taught because we all have stuff we can release and grow through. I've been grateful enough that I've been through over 30 years of, of training and teaching, healing, transformation of my journey so I can bring a lot to the table in my tool, in my tool bag, so to speak. Me a lot of spiritual teachings. It really helped me a lot. So I hope this has been of help to you. Um, this is something that was interesting. Okay. Is there a connection available? I guess the signal may have dropped for a second, so you may have gotten a glitch in my video. Hopefully you got everything I said. Um, this is something that I'm passionate about, as you may have guessed from this video and from the elements I've talked about this subject before. And if you want to get free in the, in the present, have a great freedom in the future, you've got to free up the past. It's kind of logical. It's kind of the way that the, chrono- chrono- the chronology of life works. So face it, own it, heal it, open up to it and be free so you can live your life fully from this point forward. Again, I put links in the comments to help you out. This is a Facebook Live, which is why I was responding to somebody in the comments, so uh, responding to somebody who was typing. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you wouldn't know who that was. That's okay, but now you know. Catch me on Facebook, Facebook Live first. Um, to find my broadcast, which is live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week, seven days a week, go to Barry Selby, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. My business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, has all the replays for these. You can watch my other broadcasts, all 707 before this. 
and also my YouTube channel, which is which is uh, Barry Selby's the channel. Please subscribe, and Messages from the Masculine is the playlist. But you can watch all of these as well. Links will be in the comments if you want some support. If you have any questions about this broadcast, please put them below. If you want to get some more direct help, you can message me over social media. Um, I hope it's made sense to you. This is deep stuff I know. And for Friday, it's what came up. So I'm just talking about what's relevant to talk about today. Even though it should be a light, well, it shouldn't be a light day. It's whatever it is. So I hope it's been of help to you. Thank you for watching as always. Um, I feel you if you're going through this, I feel you. I understand how it can be challenging. I invite you to do some reflection and see if this has been of help to you. And then if you need to reach out, reach out. And if you want to find somebody to get some help from, do your due diligence. Find someone that really aligns to your energy. With that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow for something different. And uh, I will take care of, and take care of yourself and have a good weekend too, Mary. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.